into what is approaching a whole new season and we can kind of get into spring. We just want to give God the glory for that as he continues to show himself worthy, as he continues to show himself faithful. And we just thank him for this house of worship and for this leader. So if you're with us and you need to call a friend or text a friend, please do so. We believe that fellowship is when we come together and we believe in the power of the Holy Spirit in this place and where you are as well. So let us bow our heads as we welcome our Lord and Savior into our presence. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you for this day, recognizing that this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice, Lord, and be glad in it. We, Father God, say thank you for this house of worship. We say thank you, Father God, for this shepherd. We say thank you, Father God, for this congregation, for all the gifts and talents that you've placed here, Lord. Father God, today we welcome you in in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. We humble ourselves and say, Holy Spirit, fill us up. Teach us and heal us. Lead us and guide us and have your way. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. Let's sing about what we're going to do when we get to heaven. Y'all should know this. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. so that there are a few things that we as members want to be conscious of as we go through the week. Um, I, if you have not joined our Bible study that we have on Thursday night through Zoom, 
I invite you today to put a reminder on your calendar because sometimes the week gets busy and we have the intention, but we might forget to so put that reminder on and come and join our very own Dr. Richmond as she leads us through a study from fearful to faithful. So you can find the link for that on our church's website at pgcchurch.us. When you go on there, there'll be on the calendar, there'll be a link for Thursday night Bible study. So we really encourage you to come and join us. If you haven't been before, welcome. Not a problem. If you've been coming, we can't wait to see you again. All right, moving on, we have something very exciting getting ready to come to Prince George's Community Church, and that is our food and fitness event. Um, actually, I don't want to say event. Our food and fitness movement, and our very own Linda Lee is going to be leading us through this um, movement of understanding the benefits of health through food, through activity, through scripture, and what we can gain as a body in Christ as we move forward and prosper in our health. So I do believe, if I'm correct, that if you're interested in assisting with this, you do just want to reach out um, to the church office, or you can reach out specifically to Sister Linda Lee, who will be heading this ministry for us. I'm very excited to see what it does. I'm very excited to see how we're all going to benefit from it. And now I just want to turn over announcements to our very own First Lady, Karen Harding. Let's give her a warm welcome. Thank you, Dr. Wendy. Good morning, friends and family of PGCC. I am here to welcome you all and to say that woman's season is coming up. So if you all are interested in helping to chair or to even just work with the committee, please come and see me in Pastor's Corner after worship today. Um, for those of you online, if you're interested, please give me a call at 240-521-4346, or you can email me at karen.harding at pgcps.org. Okay, looking forward to hearing from you ladies. God bless. All right, praise the Lord. If we can give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Has he been good to you this week? Is there anyone who would praise the Lord because he met a need this week? He lifted up your hung down head or surprised you with a miracle that you didn't think would be possible? Or if he just kept you in movement so that you could be here again in the fellowship with the body of Christ on this side of eternity. All right, we are going to um, have offering, um, and then after offering, we're gonna have pastors gonna join us for prayer for some very specific needs and concerns, okay? So this is offering time, and God loves a cheerful giver, and all he asks is that we would give him 10% of our time and our talent and then of our tenth. How good is God that we have something because he gave it to us and if you have anything, you just wanna give it back to God. Don't feel the pressure of comparison. This is not about your brother or your sister. This is about acknowledging your relationship with your savior and saying thank you for what you have put into my possession. I trust you, Lord, and I give this back to you, amen.
to you. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord, for our minister of music and our ministry team. Let's just give them a round of applause for their obedience and using the gifts that God has put inside of them that prepares our hearts and ushers in the Holy Ghost so that we we can worship at the altar of God and prepare our hearts and minds to receive the word of the Lord, which is transforming that which gives life. So we just want to say thank you. When I think of the goodness of God, it is hard to not say, Lord, my hallelujah, my highest praise. I have to give it to you. I can't give it to the business. I can't give it to the banker. I can't give it to the physician. I can't give it to the school teacher. There are a lot of people and things that have shaped the who that I am today, but nothing more than the one who spoke life in my mother's womb, kept me in a place of darkness, ushered me into the brightness of this world, and has sheltered me under his wings. It is him that deserves the highest praise. And so I give it to him. And if you all will go with me as I'm looking for our scripture for the day. We are going to be in Matthew chapter 8. And bear with me, my apologies to you. Verses 5 through 13. And if you would like to stand for the reading of the word, it is to honor and reverence our God because the word is living. And when Jesus entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, beseeching him and saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus saith unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say to this man, go, and he goeth. And to another, come, and he cometh. And to my servant, do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled, and said to them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. And I saith unto you, that many shall come from the east and the west, and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in the self same hour. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. How many of you know the Lord? To be a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper, a light in darkness, that is who he is. Yes, it is. Amen. We are grateful today. We want to share this song with you. Uh, Raymond's going to join us. i 
worship you. I worship you. For you are way, way, miracle work, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you Record, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart, and I worship you, oh God, I worship you. You 
so consistent in our lives, Lord. Here are we make a promise, keep lying in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. We worship you right now, God, because you're a way you make a miracle work. Promise, keep lying in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Sister Victoria at a memorial service. The children of the deceased, the youngest child in particular, was trying to get the music to work via some device that she was using. When I saw her struggling with this device, I said to her, Listen, you don't have to worry about music. Victoria Purcell doesn't need instruments. Now, they finally got it to work, but it wasn't because Victoria needed instruments. So we're grateful for a skill set that not only ministers, but who doesn't need an instrument. 
in order to be effective. Let me read this text again and ask you to go with me in prayer. Matthew chapter 8, beginning at verse 5. And when it entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. Now I'm going to ask you to jump over Jump over to Luke. Jump over to Luke chapter 7. After he had finished all his sayings in the hearing of the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a servant who was sick at the point of death, who was highly valued by him. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent to him elders of the Jews, saying to him, come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they pleaded with him, earnestly saying, he is worthy to have you do this for him. For he loves our nation, and he is the one who built us our synagogue. Go with me, church, for a few minutes from the theme, A Soldier's Story. A Soldier's Story. Let's pray together. God, we pray now for hearing anointing. We pray, God, for a preaching anointing. Quiet our hearts and our minds so that we hear and see only you. Bless God this time that it might be transformational in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Pulitzer Prize winning thriller, A Soldier Story, came back into vogue last year. It played at the Kennedy Center. I didn't get a chance to see it, but it's a, it's a Tony-winning play. Here's the plot. In 1944, a Louisiana-based army unit, black soldiers separated from white soldiers. A murder occurs. Two shots, bang, bang, ring out. Now, in the movie version of this Pulitzer Prize winning play, Adolf Caesar gives what I believe was an award winning performance. That's what I believe. He was nominated for Best Supporting Actor, but he didn't win. Caesar plays Sergeant Waters. It is Sergeant Waters' appointed task to eliminate the army of World War II of any persons of color, black men in particular, who he thinks bring the race down. He says, the time for the Yasser Balsen Negro is over. It was one of the best performances, and I want to use that soldier story as a jump off point today because our story involves a soldier. It's a soldier from the small town of Capernaum. Capernaum was small, but it was the hub of trade. People constantly going back and forth. Fishing was popular in Capernaum. 
In Capernaum, they sold dried fish. That was one of the ways they made their, their living. But there's a problem. Jews, and particularly Romans, are not getting along well. You see, the Romans occupy Jerusalem. By occupy, I mean what the Jews do to the Palestinians today is what the Romans did to the Jews then. You all with me? So there's this tension between Jews Gentiles, and particularly Roman soldiers. The soldiers were to keep the peace, to keep order, to keep the Jews from rebelling. That was their job, their task, their mission. Now, the story begins as Jesus enters Capernaum. A crowd is approaching this Roman centurion hears that Jesus is on his way. Go with me. Jesus is up on Branch Avenue at the DC line, for those of you who come that way, and he's heading south on Branch Avenue. They call it Route 5 by now, but it's coming under 495 where the centurion hears Jesus is on his way. Y'all would have been texting or emailing or Snapchatting or Instagramming or tweeting or next dooring or FaceTiming or TikToking. That's what y'all would have been doing. But in Jesus' day, somebody had to come and tell the centurion Jesus is headed this way. Jesus is coming. Who? Jesus. You know, Jesus of Nazareth. Bring the lame. Bring the deaf. Bring the mute. Bring the crippled. What we now call the physically impaired. Bring the lepers. What we call now bone tuberculitis or alopecia or elephantitis or dermatosis. Bring them and just put them out. So Jesus can walk by and maybe he'll touch and heal one of them. The centurion makes his way to Jesus because he has a petition that only Jesus can address. Picture the crowd that has accompanied Jesus. Get back, get back, here he comes. Oh, the Roman centurion, get back, step out of the way. Who's got the Roman centurion? Get back. Roman centurion goes to the front of the crowd. He says to Jesus, my servant is at home, sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. Have I laid it out? Before we go any further, let me ask, why a Roman centurion, leader of a hundred men, politically tied into the Roman aristocracy, would come out to meet a street preacher named Jesus? To reach this rank, a soldier has to work his way up, has to be a brave fighter, has to be a tactician, has to be a first-rate thinker. But why is he coming to Jesus petitioning help? His help is on behalf of some servant. See, the term servant, pes, not P-E-S-T, P-E-S-S, -S, the English transliteration, can get translated into English from Greek several ways. Pes can get translated a young person. 
boy or girl, irrespective of their social status. Pez can get translated, one who is a committed and obedient slave or servant. But thirdly, same word, Pez can get translated, one's own immediate offspring, a child, a son, or a daughter. Did I tell you that Roman centurions could not marry? Oh, that's the most important part. Roman centurions cannot marry. But while I got you thinking about children, anybody ever had a sick child in a hospital? While I got you thinking about children, Anybody ever had a child for whom the doctors could not find a cure? While I got you thinking about children, anybody had to sit up all night and watch a sick child, watch them toss and turn and moan and cry, and all you can do is fall on your knees and ask God, mercy, mercy for my child. That'll make you get up out of your house. If you are a Roman centurion, that'll make you risk your social standing if you are a Roman centurion. Y'all see where this is going. You see, I don't believe that the servant was just a servant. I believe that the Roman centurion had a relationship with somebody that produced a child. And now that child has been brought into the centurion's house, but that boy is now sick. He's tried all the army doctors he can find. He's tried all the doctors in Capernaum. He's tried everybody he knows, but he hears. Jesus is coming by. When you hear there's a man coming who's able to walk on water, when you hear there's a man coming who can make the waves shut up and lie down, when you hear there's a man coming who can open blinded eyes. When you hear there's a man coming who can unstop clogged ears. When you hear there's a man coming about whom all you need to do is touch the hem of his garment. When you hear that man is coming and he just might be willing to heal my child. That man just might be able to provide some relief for my child. That man might be able to in the suffering of my child. That man, that man, that man, that man, that man. Let me go. See if I can find him. Now, Luke, who sees the same story, but Luke tells it differently. Here's what Luke says. Luke said the members of the community escorted the Roman centurion to Jesus. Luke said members of the Jewish community petitioned Jesus on behalf of this Roman centurion. Can I break it down to those who might not understand? I've explained to you on more than one occasion, slavery is here. Sharecropping is here. Just slightly above slavery. Y'all with me? But every now and then, you found an owner, a landowner, who was not as brutal as some of the landowners were. So those landowners who were less brutal than other landowners were known to be good white folk. They're not really good. They're just so much better than the other folk we 
have been dealing with. We now consider them good. That's the category the centurion fell in. He's, he's a good centurion. He, he, he's not as brutal as the other centurions. In fact, he built us a synagogue. Well, actually, he let us build a synagogue, but he didn't complain. He didn't tell on us. Jesus, he deserves to have you do this miracle on his behalf. Let us speak for him. Matthew doesn't go there. Now, let me ask you. Jesus says, okay, I'll come. See, the problem is we don't have a time clock in Scripture. We don't know how long from the time the centurion heard Jesus was coming until he decided, I'm going to go see Jesus. My boy is sick. I'm going to go see Jesus. My boy is sick. I'm going to break protocol. My boy is sick. What are the people going to say about me? My boy is sick. What's going to happen to my position in this army? My boy is sick. What am I going to We don't get how long Jesus tossed and turned and was trying to decide between his standing and his boy. See, I don't think the Roman centurion would do this just for the kitchen help. I don't think he would act like this for the guys cutting the grass, chopping the weeds, taking care of the livestock. I don't believe he act like this. I believe the Roman centurion is so up in arms about going to see Jesus because this boy is his boy. Now, let me ask you, is Jesus able to come under your roof? I said, why are you asking me that? Because the centurion said, after Jesus said yes, um, um, uh, uh, okay, Lord, listen. Don't come under my roof. I'm not worthy for you to come under my roof. Just speak the word, and my boy will be healed. You see, I'm a man under authority. I got soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come, and he comes. I got servants. I understand authority. <laughs> Don't come. Just speak the word. Now, let me ask you, is your house in order? When you ask Jesus for a miracle, is your house in order so that the miracle can get through? I'm not caring about whether your actual home is messy. That's not my concern. When I go visit, sometimes people say, oh, pastor, excuse the fact that I haven't cleaned this week. Don't bother me at all. I'm here to pray, love you, and leave. I am not the home inspector. Jesus says, don't come under my roof. Is your roof able to accommodate Jesus? Can we just ask the question, are you living such a life where sin gets confessed all the time? Because some of us have roofs, have houses that we don't let Jesus in. Or we only let Jesus in certain rooms. Jesus, you can't have the whole house. Now, you can go in the living room and the kitchen, but the bedrooms, mm-mm, they off limit. Now, I'm not being home inspector-ish to your particular home, 
I'm trying to draw a contrast between somebody who asks, is your home in order? Because sometimes you have to pray and only prayer. Sometimes the only prayer you can pray is an only prayer. Look at, the, look at the text again. Look at Matthew. Look at the text. Go with me to verse 8. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word. Have y'all ever prayed an only prayer? An only prayer takes an accurate account of one's spiritual life. We pray prayers often of convenience. Lord, I was in church last Sunday, and the Sunday before that, and the Sunday before that. Now I need you to hear my prayer. Lord, you know I'm a tithing member at Prince George's. I need you to hear my prayer. Lord, you know I was visiting homeless last week. I want you to hear my prayer. Lord, you know I've been trying to do my neighborhood work. I've been struggling and pushing and caring. Lord, hear my prayer. But what the centurion says, I know my house is not in order. But only speak the word. I've got an accurate assessment. You can't come to my house, Jesus. You can't come to my house because if you come to my house, that crowd is going to come with you. And if that crowd comes with you, they're going to want to see who you healed. And if the crowd that comes with you that wants to see who you healed, then the word's going to get out that I got a child here. Don't come, Jesus. Just speak the word. And I know that my child will be healed. Is your house in order? Can you pray an only prayer? But do you know how God operates? You see, church, I don't think the centurion wanted to reveal the secret that the boy that he called servant was actually his son. I can't believe that a centurion would act this way for just anybody. But Jesus, knowing all things, heals him anyway. See, I thought y'all be shouting by now. Jesus who knows everything there is to know about this centurion, including the fact that his house is not in order, says to him, I'm going to pray an only prayer. Only say the word. And I know it will be done according to your word. Now let me explain how... how how God operates. Can I? We've got a computer back there. That computer back there that we do the live stream on and we set up to do some work on, that computer back there was the subject one day last winter when we thought we weren't going to be to make it into church. So Raymond was calling, Pastor, what do you think we ought to do? Well, it's supposed to snow tomorrow. Well, how are we going to have worship if it snows tomorrow? I don't want to do that phone thing because that thing hasn't worked for us. So how are we going to work it out? So we're trying to figure out how we're going to work Sunday live stream. I have a friend named Pete Guyette. Pete has this company called Technology Partners, Kingdom, Kingdom Partners, Kingdom Technology Partners. I'll get it right in a minute. 
Anyway, he's good with computers, all right? He's the best in the business at audio and computers. Pete says, Pastor, don't worry. I can take from my home in Virginia control of your computer at 4401 Brinkley Road, and I can remote in from Virginia as if I was standing in front of your computer. Pete, what'd you say? He said, before I left the last time, I put this application called Team Viewer on your computer. So from my home in Virginia, because I slapped Team Viewer on your computer, don't you worry about a thing. I thought y'all would have been shouting by now. Okay, that's all right. That's all right. When I got baptized, God slapped a portal in my heart. And what God does now is remote in and take control of me as if he was standing right there because God operates remotely. What I'm saying is that there are times when I feel worn and broken and bruised and God remotes in, says, let me take control. I'm going to give you the help that you need. I'm going to give you the joy that you need. I'm going to give you the peace that you need as if I was standing right there in front of you. There are some times when I need some healing in the Washington Hospital Center, in Providence Hospital, in the New Community Center, in Landover, Maryland. It is, it is a place, brothers and sisters, where God can remote in and take control of the doctor's hand and tell the doctor how to move the knife and tell the doctor how to turn this and move that and do that just as if God was standing in that place. Now, let me tell you, when you ask God to remote in, sometimes I feel like cussing somebody up and down, but God remotes in and says, shut up. Don't open your mouth. I don't want you to say anything out of character. Sometimes, when God remotes in, I'm tired, and I'm weak, and I'm worn, and heaven says, I'm going to blow on your spirit, give you some peace in your life. That's when God steps in, doesn't have to be there, only, only speak the word. And my son will be healed. God, how grateful we are. Not just for a roof that is worthy for you to come under. We thank you for even when it's not. You hear an only prayer. Thank you, God, for how you operate. Thank you for being able to operate remotely, that what's in heaven can take place on earth. Get inside us, God. Mold us and shape us and then use us in the name of Jesus. Amen. The good news, church is that the son was healed at the same hour Jesus said, I would heal your son. I want to say to you that if you don't have Team Viewer installed on your heart, if you don't have a way for God to remote in, then I would suggest you are losing the most important value in your life. 
So if you want Team Viewer baptism installed on your heart, give me your hand. Give your heart to God. All of us who are Christians, Christians, have Team Viewer so that God can remote in 24-7. We offer this remote experience with our God to you. Let's pray silently. God some praise if you would. So I do it. <laughs> Gonna ask you to also keep Tamika and Corey in your prayers, celebrating the birth, the home going, a heavenly birthday party yesterday here at the church, and oh, was it fantastic! And when I say fantastic, I mean fantastic, from the decorations to the food. Just So keep, keep them in your prayer this week and as you 
think of them as they remember the heavenly birthday of their mom who would have been 60 yesterday. I'm going to ask you now to stretch your hands forward. Repeat these words after me, if you would. I have Team Viewer installed. It was installed at my baptism. Therefore, God can remote in at any time. 24-7, 365 days per year, in Jesus' name, amen. Point to somebody and blow them a kiss if you would. Catch their eye first and blow them a kiss.